So in this video we're going to prove a theorem about how images in pre-images behave with function composition. And that theorem essentially says that it behave, they behave as they should, as you would expect them to behave. Okay, so first let's recall some definitions. Let's suppose f is a function from a to b, and s is a subset of a, so a subset of the domain. Uh, the image of s under the function f is defined to be the set of all y and b such that for some x in s, f of x is equal to y. All right? And notice that we denote the image of s under f of x, f of s. Okay? If f is a function from a to b and t is a subset of b, so it's a subset of the codomain, then the preimage of t under f the function f of x is defined to be the set of all x in a, so that f of x is an element of t. Right? And so the notation for the preimage of t under f is the symbol uh, f inverse and then of t. All right? But keep in mind that just because we're using that symbol for the preimage of a set, it does not mean that the function is invertible. And f to the minus 1 there does not denote the function inverse. Just the whole piece of notation f to the minus 1 of t means the preimage of t under f. So let's recall the definition of the function composition. So let f be a function from a to b and g be a function from b to c. The composite of these two functions is a function g composed with f and it goes from a to c and it's defined as follows. g composed with f of x is the value that g assigns to f of x. All right? So g composed with f of x is g of f of x. The theorem we want to prove is the following. Let f be a function from a to b, and g be a function from b to c. Let's let s be a subset of a, and t be a subset of c. All right. So the first statement in the theorem is that the image under g of f of s is equal to the image of s under g composed with f. Right. So in that respect, images just work just like values of the function composition. So g composed with f of s is equal to g of f of s. And the second statement is about preimages, and it states that the preimage under f of the preimage under g of t is equal to the preimage of t under g composed with f. All right, so let's prove this theorem. First, of course, we'll prove part one. So let's let f be a function from a to b, and g be a function from b to c. And let's let s be a subset of a. Here we're going to prove that g of f of s is equal to g composed with f of s. All right. Now, notice that we have a set on the left and a set on the right. So it's going to be uh, a set equality proof. Uh, to help with notation, let's let h be uh, the name we give to g composed with f, and let's let u be equal to the image of s under f. All right. So to prove two sets are equal, we have to prove that one's a subset of the other, and the second one's a subset of the first. So first, let's prove that g of f of s is a subset of the image of s under g composed with f. So let's let t be an element of g of f of s. Now, of course, we called f of s u. So just to help with notation, we'll rewrite that as t is an element of g of u. Right? So t is an element of the image of u under g. And that means there exists something in u. Let's call it little u. So that g of little u is equal to t. Now let's think about u. Okay? u is in u, big U which is the image of s under f. All right, so that means there exists something in s, let's call it little s, so that f of s is equal to u. And now let's see what happens to little s under h, or under g composed with f. Okay, h of little s is of course g composed with f of little s, which is g evaluated at the value f of s. f of s is u, and g of u is t, 
so h of s is equal to t. Okay, so we've proved that there exists something in the set s called little s, so that h of s is equal to t, all right? And so t is an element of the image of s under h. That is, t is an element of g composed with f of s. So t is an element of the image of s under g composed with f, right? So we started with t being an element of g of f of s, and we conclude that t is an element of the image of s under g composed with f. This proves that g of f of s is a subset of the image of s under g composed with f. All right, so we're halfway to proving this set equality now. So now let's prove that the image of s under g composed with f is a subset of g of f of s. Okay, so again, um, h is still g composed with f, and u is still f of s. Let's begin by assuming that we have some element t in the image of s under g composed with f. g composed with f, of course, we're calling h. So that means that there exists something in s, let's call it little s, so that h of s is equal to t. Now let's see what, let's expand that out again here. So that means t is equal to g composed with f of little s, right? Because h is g composed with f. And by definition of the function composition, that's the value g assigns to f of s, all right? So let's let u be f of s, and let's just rewrite this quickly. That means since s is in s, s is in big S, little s is in big S, that means u is an element of the image of s under f, right? Now we called the image of s under f u, all right? We also have though that by our definition of little u, t is equal to g of little u, right? So t is equal to g of f of s, u is equal to f of s, so t is equal to g of u, all right? And that all you can summarize as saying that t is an element of the image of u under g. Of course, u is the image of s under f, so t is an element of g of f of s, okay? So this proves that the image of s under g composed with f is a subset of g of f of s. Now, since we've proved that the set inclusion goes both ways. It follows that these two sets are equal. So we have that g of f of s is equal to the image of s under g composed with f. Okay, so now part two of the theorem. Let's let f be a function from a to b and g be a function from b to c. Let's let t be a subset of c, right? So the claim is that the preimage under f of the preimage under g of t is equal to the preimage of t under g composed with f. Again, on the left and the right we have sets, so we have to do a set equality proof. As before, we're going to let h be g composed with f, and let's call the preimage of t under g, let's call that v. That's just to help with notation. All right, so step one, first we're going to prove that the preimage under f of the preimage of t under g is a subset of the preimage of t under g composed with f. So let's let s be an element of the preimage of under f of the preimage of t under g. All right. Uh, remember that we called v, um, we called the preimage of t under g, we called that v. So s is an element of the preimage of v under f. So that means f of s is an element of v. That's just the definition of the preimage. Of course, v is the preimage of t under g. Okay. So f of s is an element of the preimage of t under g. Well, that means g of f of s has to be an element of t. Okay. So that is h of s, h of course is g composed with f, and g of f of s is equal to h of s by definition of function composition. So h of s is an element of t. 
That, of course, implies that S is an element of the pre-image of T under H. And again, what is H? It's G composed with F. So we have that S is an element of the pre-image of T under G composed with F. Right? So that proves that the pre-image under F of the pre-image under G of T is a subset of the pre-image of T under G composed with F. All right, we're almost there. We've got one more set inclusion. We've got to prove set inclusion in the other direction. So we're going to prove that the pre-image of T under G composed with F is a subset of the pre-image under F of the pre-image under G of T. All right? So suppose that we have an element S that's in the pre-image under T of G composed with F. Okay, G composed with F we called H. So S is an element of the pre-image of T under H. So that means H of S is an element of T. All right. Now that is G composed with F of S is an element of T. So G of F of S is an element of T. That means F of S is an element of the pre-image under G of T. And remember the pre-image under G of T is V. So that means that S is an element of the pre-image under F of V. V again is the pre-image under G of T, so S is an element of the pre-image under F of the pre-image under G of T. Okay, so that exactly proves that the pre-image under T, pre-image of T under G composed with F is a subset of the pre-image under F of the pre-image under G of T. Now we've proved the set inclusion goes both ways, so that implies that those two sets are equal. So the pre-image under F of the pre-image of T under G is equal to the pre-image of T under G composed with F. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.